Hi and welcome back. So a recent video of mine has attracted quite a few comments about my lipid scores and how if I change my diet I could reduce that score quite significantly. Uh, the advice I got was to go on a plant-based diet. Uh, some people have even ventured to say that David Sinclair has now moved to a plant-based diet, ergo so should I. Uh, also comments urging me to watch Forks Over Knives and also a program called Game Changers. So um, try anything once, I looked at it. What I did find was it was very difficult to actually get one specific definition of what a plant-based diet is. So in this video, I'm going to cover the definitions I found which covered a plant-based diet and also give you what I believe a plant-based diet actually means. Firstly, let me say before I begin that I'm not here to criticise any dietary-based community or throw shade in any way over any kind of particular lifestyle. I'm just here for the facts. I want to know what is a plant-based diet. Um, I personally thought I was on a plant-based diet. Um, and I'm gonna show you in a minute just what I mean by that. Five days of the week, I don't eat anything until around noon, 12.30. Uh, up until then, I only drink water and black coffee. Uh, and then after that, I will now show you my my eating um, habits in my eight hour eating window. So uh, let's look at my meal plan. My breakfast, which is around noon, is fat bombs, which are made of extra virgin olive oil, organic peanut butter, cinnamon powder, coconut flakes, organic when I can get them, cacao powder, vanilla essence and a sprinkle of Himalayan rock salt and as far as I'm aware that's all plant-based so vegetarian. My afternoon snack if I think I need it when I get home um, is nuts usually almonds sometimes cashews uh, never pre-salted I always salt them myself with Himalayan rock salt or I'll make a berry shake from frozen raspberries, strawberries or blueberries. Uh, there's MCT oil, oatmeal and almond milk. And again, I think that's all plant-based um, or vegetarian. Dinner then is vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, either all of them or a mixture of some of them. Uh, I think they're definitely all plants. And then with my evening meal is meat, <clears throat> chicken breast, grilled, um, a homemade burger, uh, a steak, or um, as I'm trying to get my vitamin D3 up, um, steamed salmon at least two, sometimes three times a week. So that's my meal plan. So to me, my breakfast, which is at lunchtime, and my afternoon snack, uh, as far as I'm aware, makes me a vegetarian. Uh, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan or not, and you wish to comment, let me know if you think I'm, if I'm right or if I'm wildly wrong uh, in this assumption. Um, so the reason that I said my meal, my meals up until dinner, and some of dinner is plant-based, I was a vegetarian, is for these definitions. So in this slide, you can see the definitions by the separate societies for vegans and vegetarians. Uh, and this is listed on healthline.com and I'll put a link in the description below to their website. So first of all, let's look at uh, vegetarian. A vegetarian, according to the Vegetarian Society, is someone who does not eat any meat, poultry, game, fish, shellfish, or byproducts of animal slaughter. A vegan is the same, uh, however um, their way of living attempts to exclude all forms of animal exploitation and cruelty as much as possible. So for the rest of this video all I'm going to talk about is food and the diet. 
Now, that's not to say that I don't believe there is a problem with animal exploitation, because in some countries of the world, uh, I think there is a real problem with it and it does need to be addressed. However, for the rest of this video, I'm purely going to talk about the food that we eat and not the way that animals are exploited. Um, I was surprised to find that there is actually more than one level of vegetarian. There are many types of vegetarian, and I'll show you what they are summarized in this next clip. So vegetarian diets can contain various levels of fruits, vegetables, grains, pulses, nuts, and seeds. The inclusion of dairy and eggs depends on the type of diet that the vegetarian follows. The most common types of vegetarians, um, there are more, include uh, lacto-over-vegetarians that will not eat flesh, but do consume dairy and egg products. Lacto-vegetarians that again avoid flesh and eggs, but do consume dairy products. And we've got ovo-vegetarians um, that avoid all animal products, but they do eat eggs. And then we've got vegans who avoid all animal and animal derived products. So vegans are a type of vegetarian, according to healthline.com. So in the video that I talked about earlier, there were quite a few comments talking about their definition of a plant based diet. And I had a couple of uh, interactions with different people about what they believed constitutes a plant based uh, diet. So what I'm going to do now is show you a couple of definitions that I found um, of other people's interpretation of a plant based diet. Let's take a look at the definition of plant based diets. The first definition is from Wikipedia. And they say a plant based diet is a diet consisting mostly or entirely of foods derived from plants, including vegetable grains, nuts, seeds, legumes and fruits, and with few or no animal products. A plant based diet is not necessarily vegetarian. That leads me to believe that you can eat meat on a plant based diet. Let's have a look what forks over knives say. Now they subdivide a plant based diet into two separate areas. Whole food, which describes natural foods that are not heavily processed. That means whole, unrefined or minimally refined ingredients. What does minimally refined means? That seems slightly vague for a definition. And then they talk about plant based means food that comes from plants and doesn't include animal ingredients such as milk, meat, milk, eggs or honey. Well, that's just, as far as I'm aware, a vegan diet. So I've, I've made a few notes here because um, when I look at that forks over knives definition contradicts Wikipedia's by saying that a plant based diet consists of no meat whatsoever. When you then go back and look at their definition of a plant-based diet, if you take out the whole food element, you compare that to Healthline's definition of a vegetarian diet, it's exactly the same. Um, so forks over knives definition of plant-based is just a vegan diet with a very vague processed food kicker thrown in in an attempt at separation. Um, anyone else agree or wholly disagree with that uh, again leave your comments in the in the section below i'd be interested to read those um so is this just some kind of weak rebranding by forks over knives um the only difference now is that the vegetables that you eat must must not be highly processed but must be minimally processed um so what does highly processed mean there's no definition of that so are tinned carrots out but a carrot smoothie or a carrot juice is okay. Again, if you've got your idea of what processed, heavily processed means, again, please leave those in the comments below so I'm, um, I and those people watching this could be, could be better informed. So as my investigations <clears throat> continued, um, I found this other company called plantbasedfoods.org uh, and I'll put up on the screen a copy of their homepage and you'll see from that that they offer the only plant-based food certification. 
Now they may offer the only and the first plant-based food certification, but under whose authority? Is it the US government? Is it the um, state government? Or is it the FDA? Or are they just putting words on the website to try to big themselves up? Uh, let's take a look at what their aims and objectives are as an organization. So let's take a look at what um, plantbasedfoods.org have to say in their uh, aims and objectives. So what they aim to do is to educate the public uh, and media to increase visibility for plant-based foods and boost consumer acceptance. So an education type um, goal there. Uh, eliminate policies and practices that place plant-based meats, milks, eggs and butters at an economic disadvantage. So the point I'm gonna come back to there is plant-based meats. Uh, and the third one is to change the debate on public policy regarding dietary guidelines. Um, so that'll be interesting to see exactly what they mean by that. So when you look at their aims and their goals, uh, one of the things I highlighted was um, plant-based meats. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by plant-based meats. They obviously don't mean meat in the true sense of the word, like a, a roast beef or a pork chop. So are they talking about maybe the meat of a coconut? I'm, I'm not too sure. It doesn't, it doesn't specify that. Um, the other thing is they list milk, eggs and butters, but this contradicts, contradicts forks over knives who say plant-based means food that comes from plants and doesn't include any animal ingredients such as milk, eggs and honey, which again is more a vegan diet and that already exists. So are they trying to rebrand plant-based or rebrand vegan as plant-based? Uh, again, there seems to be another contradiction here with exactly what plant-based means. So this is all well and good, but, but why do I care? What's, what's the big deal? Um, well, the thing that pointed me in this direction was that many of the comments in the comment section of the previous video talked about David Sinclair going plant-based. Um, and I think a lot of these people seem to have taken his words as meaning he was going 100% vegetarian slash vegan. Um, well, that's the impression I got from many of the comments in the, in the lipid test video. So, I've got a clip of David Sinclair in his interview with Rich Roll where he actually explains what he means by a plant-based diet. Now, I've only got about a two-minute clip here, um, which, I've, which I've stuck together. His interview with Rich Roll is actually over two hours, and it is quite a good interview. So if you've got the time, um, watch it. So the, so the plant-based food, um, I think a little bit of meat is fine, especially if you work out and you're trying to build up bulk up some muscle. But I think that what we've learned is by studying the Sardinians and the ok Okinawans is that those diets are the best for, for humans. And they are mostly plant-based with a little bit of meat like fish. Mm -hmm. So why does that work? Okay. Why, why do we think that works? The two reasons. One is that you don't want to overload on certain types of pro, uh, amino acids, which you'll find in meat, uh, leucine, isoleucine, valine. These are turn off our body's defenses through a, process, a pathway called mTOR. Um, there'll probably be a Nobel Prize awarded for that stuff, by the way. It's a big deal, mTOR. But if you're always eating a lot of protein in terms of meat, uh, then you'll you'll never really optimize your body's defenses. So I try mm -hmm. to eat plant-based foods. The, what, what you do when you activate this mTOR pathway is you're telling your cells in your body that times are good. You've just caught a mammoth, okay, basically. And now's the time to build your body and actually fix things, uh, heal things and grow. And it turns out that there are, there are two things your body can do. There's grow, and then there's, on the other hand, the other side of the balance is to protect. Growth, protect, growth, protect. And if you're always in this growth mode by telling your body, now's the time you got your amino acids, grow, that's great when you're young and middle-aged, you'll bulk up, right? You'll feel good. You'll actually burn energy more. You'll lose a bit of fat. But long-term, you're going to sacrifice your longevity, in my view, because you're not turning on your body's defenses, which typically are turned on when your body senses that there's adversity. There's a need. Yeah. So being hungry and eating plants are t going to be telling your body times are not as good. We've run out of mammoth meat. 
let's hunker down. Right. So I hope you found that interesting um, and cleared up exactly what he means by a plant-based diet and why he thinks possibly a little bit of meat is okay. Um, so I've got a couple of takeaways from that. I've made a few notes. Um, so he believes that a diet based on plants doesn't necessarily only mean plants. Um, if this were the case, it would be some kind of vegetarian diet. And he's he's purporting to say he's gone plant-based, not fully vegetarian. So a little bit of meat is fine, i.e. not vegetarian. Um, and I'm not saying people are trying to mislead me, but their interpretation of David Sinclair going plant-based is that he's gone vegetarian or vegan. And I think from that last clip, that's, that's not really the case. Again, I might be misinterpreting it, so please put your comments below if you think I have. Um, he also says that the Sardinian Okinawan diet is best for best type of diet for humans. Um, and I'll show a picture there. You'll see that that um, diet includes where possible or where available fish and meat. Um, and some of you will be glad to hear it, it does also include alcohol. Um, the other thing he talks about is not to overload with amino acids that come from meat. Um, so that could mean possibly issues with a carnivore diet. He talks about eating and getting lots of amino acids from meat as um, driving forward with the mTOR pathway, which by all accounts is a bad thing all of the time. Uh, our bodies only got two modes, grow and protect. Um, and if you're only eating vegetarian, and this is my interpretation, then you're always in the protect mode. Um, you need those amino acids from meat at some time to be able to actually grow. Um, eating like a vegetarian tells your body times are not good, so it's not time to build, it's time to protect. Um, the, last the last point he did make, which did strike cold with me, was when I can bear strict vegetarians or strict vegans to perhaps someone who's on a plant-based diet as I believe it to be, um, you can tell the difference between someone who's eating a little bit of meat to someone who's not eating any meat at all. So it's obviously very easy to stand on the sideline and throw shade. And I, and I do like that phrase the kids are using, throwing shade. It's easy to stand on the sideline and criticize someone who's at least doing something. Um, so what I've got now is my definitions. Um, first of all, whole food. Uh, and again, feel free to, to throw shade on what I believe um, the definition of whole food and plant-based is. So my definition of whole food. Whole food describes any food that has not been processed. What do I mean by processed? A series of mechanical or chemical operations on something, in this case food, in order to change or preserve it. So I also believe that there are different levels of processed, as do forks over knives. Um, I'm going to go slightly more into depth than rather overly and minimally, um, and I'm going to use as a vehicle to explain this, the, the humble apple. So this is what I believe the levels of processed food are. So let's look first at the apple, as your God intended it. Nothing added, nothing taken away. My idea of whole food. Then we've got a smoothie. Nothing added, nothing taken away. But this has had one mechanical process applied to it, so not 100% whole food. Then we've got apple juice, where, which you could um, juice at home or you could buy from a juice bar. Uh, lots taken away in regard to pulp, etc., and just the juices left. So, again, not whole food. And then the apple juice that you can buy from the store, usually marketed to kids, lots taken away and lots added. And if you look at the ingredients for this um, store bought apple juice, you'll see a lot of things in there, including beef extract, silicon dioxide ascorbic acid. Uh, apart from apple puree powder, there's actually nothing in there that says apple, like the apple that you can see on the left. 
the whole food apple. So here's the big one. Um, this is what I believe my definition of plant-based is. Uh, and you'll find that it's very similar to that of David Sinclair and also falls in line with um, traditional thinking for um, the Okinawan diet too. So my definition of a plant-based diet, pretty straightforward, is a diet based on plants, but not consisting solely of plants. A diet consisting solely of plants, regardless of the level of processing, is a vegan diet. Um, a couple of people, people have also pointed me in the direction of the Blue Zone diets with regard to health, which I agree with because the Okinawan diet is a Blue Zone diet. But every Blue Zone diet I've looked at at the moment consists of some meat in that diet. So a diet based on plants, but not consisting solely of plants, also including fish, meat, shellfish, etc. So I'm hoping that's now is uh, as clear as mud. Lots of different people have said lots of different things about what they believe is the definition of plant-based. Um, so do you agree with me, David Sinclair and the Okinawan diet that it can include some meat, albeit very small amounts, or do you believe as do forks over knives that a plant-based diet consists of no meat whatsoever? Plant-based means vegetarian. Uh, and the only difference is, as I said before, the weak kicker of now you can't have processed vegetables. They have to be whole, um, whole food vegetables uh, and fruit as well. Um, what's your definition of plant-based? Is it um, something similar to mine and David Sinclair's? Is it similar to forks over knives? Or is it somewhere in between completely different again? I'd be interested to see another version or definition of plant-based. Um, and do you think the, the forks over knives definition of whole food attached to plant-based, I think we can all agree plant-based in their definition just means vegan or vegetarian. Is there um, insertion of whole food saying it can't be processed, just some kind of weak attempt at rebranding so they move on beyond um, vegan and vegetarianism um, to set themselves up as a different class altogether. Well, that's it for now. Um, not the normal type of NMN uh, video that I would do, but one that I thought was important because, as David Sinclair said a number of times lately, it's not all just about NAD boosters. Um, we can do lots of other things to help improve our longevity. I think in one of his statements, he said, our genes are only 20% of how long we live. The rest is up to you. What are you going to do about it today? So I'm beginning to become a firm believer that an NAD booster, whether it be NR or NMN, is not a silver bullet. You need to take into account a number of other things. And I think I'll do a video in the future where I talk about things that Rhonda Patrick also mentions, which are not just based on um, supplements and in particular NAD boosters. Well, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. Um, as always, take care and bye for now.